Gram staining technique was originally developed by the Danish biologist Hans Christian Gram. It is a common technique used to differentiate between two larger groups of bacteria based on their different cell wall constituents. According to this method, there are two major groups of bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria, which stains in purple with gram stain. And gram-negative bacteria, which stains in pink with gram stain. We will discuss this gram staining method in more detail at the end of this video. The differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are primarily related to their cell wall composition. Bacterial cell walls composed mostly of a substance unique to bacteria, known as peptidoglycan, or murine. However, the thickness of this peptidoglycan cell wall differs in gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Peptidoglycan is a macromolecule, composed mainly of amino sugars and amino acids. There are two types of amino sugars present, N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid, which are denoted by the letters G and M in the diagram respectively. These alternating amino sugars are cross-linked by short peptides, which gives strength to the cell wall. Two major functions of peptidoglycan are to provide protection to the bacterial cell and to define the shape of the bacteria. Here is an image of the cell walls of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The gram-positive cell wall has several layers of peptidoglycan. The thick layers of peptidoglycan help to support the cell membrane and provide a place of attachment for other molecules. Therefore, gram-positive cell wall retains most of the crystal violet stain used in gram staining. Thus, gram-positive bacteria appear in purple after the staining process. I will explain the process of gram staining later in this video. In contrast, gram-negative bacteria contain only a single layer of peptidoglycan and does not retain the initial crystal violet dye. But it picks up the pink color of the counter stain. Thus, gram-negative bacteria appear in pink color after the staining process. Gram-positive cell walls also contain chains of tachoic acid that extend from the plasma membrane through the peptidoglycan cell wall. These sugar-containing polymers assist in maintaining cell shape and play a role in proper cell division. And most importantly, tachoic acid helps some gram-positive bacteria to adhere to host cells and cause infection. Moreover, Pathogenic gram-positive bacteria secrete exotoxins, which are produced within the bacterial cells and released into the host tissues. Common examples for gram-positive bacteria are Staphylococcus aureus, which is responsible for many skin diseases and abscesses, Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is responsible for bacterial pneumonia, and Clostridium tetani, which is responsible for tetanus. The cell wall structure of gram-negative bacteria is more complex than that of gram-positive bacteria. Located between the plasma membrane and the thin peptidoglycan layer is a gel-like matrix called periplasmic space. Unlike in gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria have an outer membrane layer that is external to the peptidoglycan cell wall. Membrane proteins and murine lipoproteins attach the outer membrane to the cell wall. In contrast to gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria have both exotoxins and endotoxins. Common examples for gram-negative bacteria are Neisseria meningitidis, which causes meningitis, E. coli, a commensal in the gastrointestinal tract, and Salmonella, which causes typhoid fever. Gram-staining process involves three steps. In the first step, bacteria are stained with a water-soluble dye called crystal violet. With this dye, all the bacteria will be stained in purple. Then, a Gram's iodine solution is added to the slide. This causes formation of a complex between crystal violet and iodine. And this complex is larger than the molecules of crystal violet. In the second step, a decolorizer, such as acetone or ethanol, is added to the slide. This causes dehydration, shrinkage, and tightening of the peptidoglycan layer. As a result, the large crystal violet iodine complex is now unable to penetrate the peptidoglycan layer of gram-positive bacteria and gets trapped inside their cell wall. However, as the peptidoglycan layer of gram-negative cells in thinner crystal violet iodine complex is washed out during decolorization, 
In the magnified slide, you can see the stained gram-positive cells in purple and decolorized gram-negative cells in white. In the third and final step, a counter stain, such as weakly water-soluble safranin is added. Safranin is lighter than crystal violet. Therefore, it does not disrupt the purple color in gram-positive cells. However, decolorized gram-negative cells will be stained in pink, as you can see in the magnified slide. Okay. That is about gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria in a nutshell. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any question or doubt regarding this topic, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Subscribe Med today for more videos. See you soon in the next video.